What if I told you that I know a bunch of hackers who are traveling the world, living on beaches, and mostly they're making a lot of their income just by hacking and doing bug bounty hunting? I know that sounds a little bit far fetched and it just kind of sounds like a dream being sold to you, but honestly, it's very doable, but you just need to have a few things in place before you can execute it. And in this video, I kind of want to talk about that and share my experience on how I have done this for the past year or so, some of the challenges that I dealt with and so on. But before we do that, I've got to quickly give a shout out to our sponsor, Sneak, for making this video happen. So if you are familiar with my channel, then you know that I'm a big advocate of secure coding. Whether you are using open source libraries or writing your code from scratch, it is important to make sure your code that you're putting into your application isn't going to make you vulnerable to bad actors. That's where Sneak comes in. Sneak integrates into your existing tools, IDEs, CLI, and repos, and scans your code as you write it in real time. This way, you can make sure that your project remains secure from the start. Sneak finds your vulnerabilities and allows you to fix them with just a click. Sneak opens fixed PRs so you can just merge and move on. And in that last 30 second that I spent explaining what Sneak is, I scanned and fixed my code. And you can try it out for yourself for free by signing up today on sneak.co slash nahamsek. Big thank you to Sneak for sponsoring this video. But do me a favor, drop me a comment before we continue with this video and let me know, do you think it's worth doing bug bounties full-time in 2023? Do you think it's something that people should do or not? I want to hear from you. And hopefully by the end of this video, I give you an answer by sharing my experience and how I've done it in the last year. I mentioned that you need to have a few things in place. I feel like there is three things that you need to have in mind. First is your budget. Second is your runway. And third, it's a plan to execute on whether or not you want to do this full time. The first thing that I mentioned was your budget. This budget thing is really important to come up with. And it's not just a budget. It's going to dictate how much effort you have to put in and probably some stress that's going to put on you. But it's really important to think about it. And in order to start with our budget, we got to look at our spending habits. And if it wasn't for being kind of forced out of my last job and my last position from an executive role when I was making really, really comfortable and a good salary to doing this full time, then I probably wouldn't have done the same things. And I kind of learned that my spending habits were kind of dictated by how much money I was making. And honestly, that's not a good thing because the more money you make, then you're probably going to care less about how much money you make because you know how much money is guaranteed every two weeks. That paycheck is going to hit your bank account no matter what as long as you have that job. And when that wasn't the case anymore for me, I really had to sit down and look at where was all of my money going and looking at all my expenses and all my spending habits, a lot of it wasn't my living expenses. So a lot of it was just going to these random trips and nights out to eat, bars, restaurants, or just things that didn't really make a difference in my day-to-day -day life. And I, I know that going out to eat is probably a big part of your life if you don't you know, know how to cook, but we'll talk about all of that. But the moral of the story is that I had to sit down and figure out what are the bare minimums that I do need in order for me to survive. And honestly, I think this is what keeps a lot of people away from chasing their dreams because they've gone in themselves into a position when they no longer can chase their dreams because of their spending habits and that thing has gone in between them and their dreams. So the bare minimums are things like your rent or if you have a mortgage, it's your car payment, it's your insurance, it's your groceries, and maybe a little bit of fun money or what I call an old crap funds that you put aside just in case something isn't covered by your budget. And having a budget and bare minimum doesn't mean that you can't have fun. It's just genuinely sitting down and going, are these things that I want or are these things that I need to cover during my monthly expenses? So keep that in mind. It doesn't mean that you have to be broke and you know it's just a way to start and it really forces you to evaluate how you spend your money. And honestly, you start to appreciate your work and the time that you put into making money more and more. The next thing is your runway. Now you have your budget and you know what you need to spend your money on. This is how much I need to make, but you also need to have a runway. The runway is going to be what you saved up, hopefully by whatever full-time job that you're doing or whatever career you have right now is the three to six months of money of all your expenses that you need to put aside just in case things don't go as planned and you have to pay your mortgage, your rent, your car payment, and so on. So for example, if your 
bare minimum is anything between four to six thousand dollars let's say five thousand is a good place you times that by three or six i prefer to do six months that gives you thirty thousand meaning you have to have thirty thousand dollars in the bank in order to survive and keep that in mind i'm giving you these random numbers and that fluctuate depending on where you live so if you're in california it's probably a lot more expensive versus some other country that the wages of living is a lot less, especially if you're converting dollars into your local currency. Now we need to talk about the plan. Bug bounties are very high in risk, but they're also very high in reward. And let me explain what that means. The high in risk means that there is a high risk of you not finding things. There's a high risk of you finding duplicates or that you're going to spend maybe five, six, seven, eight days without finding a single vulnerability. But I also said it's high in reward because you could also find a single vulnerability that could be worth five, ten, or fifteen thousand dollars, depending on the programs that you hack on and the vulnerabilities that you find. But that whole thing was a loaded sentence. Let's unpack it. I mentioned a bunch of things. One was the programs you hack on and the bugs that you find. The programs you hack on are very, very important. For example, for my case, the way I came up with these programs was by looking at the average payout or what they pay for a medium severity vulnerability. So if the average or the medium findings are anywhere between four to 500, then that is a kind of program that I want to take a look at. But it also goes beyond the bounty amounts. You have to take a look at how big the industry and this company's scope is as well. And I don't mean to say, hey, you need to find a big program with a lot of asset in scope, but you need to find a large company that has a lot of different applications and micro apps. These are your companies like Spotify, Snapchat, GM. These are the big companies that have a lot of different applications speaking to each other where you can sign up for one and log into multiple, or you can just create accounts. They have things like dashboard analytics, ads, and just a bunch of different applications that allow you to do different things but they all get connected to their core application. So Spotify is a great example of it because they have things like ads, you can upload music to it, you can make playlists. There's all these different ways that a user could sign up that could contribute to their core application. So that's the number one thing to do. And we'll talk about programs a little bit more, but I wanna talk about the bugs that you find as well. Because these bugs that you find are going to be the way that you're going to make your monthly revenue or your monthly income the fastest. You don't want to look at things that could be found by any hackers. You don't want to find things that could be found by scanners. You want to find things that are very, very niche. I'm not saying don't go look for cross-site scripting or easy idors. You always should look for those. They're easy to find. They're easy wins. But in reality of it, you should find things that are more like business logic issues or authorization and things that you can't just feed it to a scanner in hopes to find it. Scanners aren't going to always find vulnerabilities, there's going to be XSS or idols are going to miss, but the vulnerabilities on authorization, authentication, or logical flaws are a lot harder to find for them because they don't have the human element like you and I do. So keep that in mind when you pick your target and go on. So far, we talked about the program selection, the average payout, the bugs you found, but there's a little bit more to it. A lot of times I feel like hackers find these programs that are wide scope, but they don't find any vulnerabilities. And then within a couple hours are going from program to another program to another program. And you have this like jumping around that you do, and then you eventually just get frustrated and give up. What I want you to do is if you ever consider doing bug bounties full time is to pick a program that is large enough that has some legacy stuff, maybe have a lot of different applications and stick to it. Try and build momentum, understand how those applications that I mentioned earlier kind of contribute to the core application. How do you sign up for it? Just because a application that you're looking at has some sort of a requirement to be a certain type of user, it shouldn't get on your way of signing up for it. Find out how you can become that thing. So for example, if you have to be a musician to sign up on Spotify to release a song, you don't necessarily have to be a musician. You can become one. Anyone could become a musician. You can find a beat, maybe write something over it, you don't have to sing, but you can create some sort of a song on your keyboard, on your laptop, or somewhere you can purchase it and post it on Spotify as an example. Please don't go do this on Spotify, actually, and spam it with a lot of different music. I just want to give you an example of how you have to overcome these different blockers in order to get access to websites that other people don't have 
access to. So that's kind of the the mentality and things that helped me get around. I've been doing this on a bug bounty program on Hacker One. Unfortunately, it's private, but it's yielded a lot of different vulnerabilities because that's opened up a lot of different applications that I didn't have access to. I just had to figure out how to get access to them. There was a lot of hoops to jump through, but guess what? I was one of the only people that had access to these applications that other bug bounty hunters didn't have access to. So keep that in mind. It's always about problem solving and finding out a way to get in. I know this video can't just cover everything that I want to talk about in regards to going to do bug bounties full time. And it's supposed to be quick. Unfortunately, I know that YouTube hates long for YouTube content. So I've made a blog post. I'll link it down below. Go check it out. Let me know what you think of it. It's more in details of how I did bug bounties full time. But honestly, I get a lot of questions about being a full-time bug bounty hunter and if it's worth doing, how to do it and so on that I thought I'll make this video, but also cover the rest of it in a blog post in hopes that it could guide you to also chase your dreams and find a way to do bug bounties full-time like I have. All right, that's it. Do me a favor if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, become a Nahomi. We did hit 100K, so I appreciate you for being a part of it. But if you're not already a Nahomi, hit that subscribe button, like this video, and make sure you come back next Monday for the next video.